Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be looking at um, upgrading parts of our network to uh, 10 gig. Uh, and the reason for that is we've got a super high powered uh, NAS drive. So today we're going to be looking at this um, switch from Zizel. So it's a 12 port switch with three 10 gig ports. Okay, so before we get started, there's a couple of caveats. So this is the first time we've um, used or seen one of these switches. So we're gonna be unboxing it together and then walking through the setup. So because it's the first time we, we've been setting one of these up, that we might run into a few issues, but we're gonna take you along for the ride. Okay, so let's have a look what we've got in the box. So we've got some wall mounting screws. We've got a UK plug adapter and our European and US plug adapters. We've got some sticky pads for the bottom and we've got our power adapter. So not sure what the power adapter ampage is, but it says here it is a, not entirely sure. So it says two amp on here, but it's gotta be more than that. Okay, so let's get the plug sorted out. And I believe that we need to configure this device via a web interface, so we'll do that in a minute. First thing is, of course, try and work out how to get this uh, plug in. There we go, so it just slots in and clips in there. And then let's have a look at the unit itself. So this is supposed to be a desktop fanless unit, but already, I can see that there is a small fan in there. I'm presuming that is for the 10 gig port. So we've got three 10 gig ports here and we've got an SFP 10 gig port as well. So that's gigabit and 10 gig um, ports. These are copper um, ethernet ports up to 10 gig. So we're gonna be using CAT6A cabling for this. And then we've got eight one gig ports here. <clears throat> so let's get this connected and see what we think so we're going to plug that in this plugs into the dc 12 volt port and we can see straight away we've got a, a light as it's starting up and then the next thing we're going to do is because we're going to configure this via a web interface let's have a look to see what we got here we've got the warranty card and the instructions Okay, so for the web managed switch only, we're going to plug into a gigabit port. So we've got our network cable that just runs back to our router and our other switch. So we're gonna plug this into port one, like that. And we've got green, which means it's gigabit. And then Let's have a look to see if we can get, get connected to the web interface. Okay, so first of all, let's see if we can find it on the network. It should come up as DHCP, and I'm looking for something that I don't recognize, and there we can see it here. So 192.168.10.92. So let's see if we can get connected. Okay, so here we are, and let's see what the password is. So according to this, the password is 1234. Okay, and we're prompted straight away to change our admin password, which we're gonna do. We're gonna apply that, and then we're gonna log in with our new details. Okay, so we're in. Okay, let's have a look at what the connectivity is. So broadcast storm control, loop prevention control, speed of the ports, whether they're enabled or not, speed type, flow control, we don't need to change any of that. We're not gonna be using VLANs, but this is great to see that we can actually set VLANs on um, our, uh, each of our ports if we need to. We're not going to be using that link aggregation 
Okay, so we're going to leave that as default. So this enables you to um, combine uh, ports. So for instance, if you wanted to combine port 9, 10 and 11, so that's our three 10 gig ports, you can connect three network cables into there and that would give you um, combined throughput, I believe. But we're not going to be using that. So we can use, let's have a look, five and six. So you can combine any of the ports. You can combine port one, two, three, and four, which are four gigabit ports. You can combine uh, port five and six. So you can create your groups there, which is good. And then port mirroring. So um, we're not going to be using this, but um, you can mirror um, various uh, ports. So if you wanted to mirror port one to port two, you can do that there. QoS, that's quality of service. So again, you can, um, looks like you can set port based quality of service. And let's have a look at that. Okay, so again, you can do the same on uh, 802.1p. We're going to go back to port based quality of service and we're not going to be using that at all, but that's good that you can use it. And IGMP snooping. Um, this enables you to um, find all of your devices and stuff. Um, and then management, DHCP is enabled, and that's picked up our current settings. HTTP and HTTPS, so that's enabled. Management um, VID, so this is your, um, your management VLAN. Um, we're just going to be setting and leaving that as default. So in actual fact, we don't need to do any configuration at all, which is brilliant. Um, it's just plug and go. So the way we're going to be using it is we are going to be connecting our NAS drive into one of the 10 gig ports, and then we're going to be using another 10 gig port, and we're going to be running a CAT6A cable back to our PC. So we haven't got our 10 gig uh, network interface on the computer yet, but we will be purchasing that and getting that installed um, once we've got this set up how we want it basically, but uh, it's very straightforward. There's no setup that we need to do here. Um, if we were going to be using VLANs, potentially we might do that in the future, but um, we've got no need for that at the moment. So that's a brief look at the interface on the device itself. Um, so what we can do is we can actually shut that down and we can now go and get this installed. So before we're going to get it installed, we are going to have to configure the interface on our um, device. So we're going to be doing that because we're connected with a fixed IP on the gigabit port at the moment. I want to go in and set the IP address on the 10 gig port so that we can um, just plug it in and it should in theory just work. So. Um, let's go off and do that now. So let's go in. It's not a problem. We can go in. We'll give it a different IP address for now. And once we get, get it connected, we can revert that. So let's do 245. Default gateways dot one and our DNS server again. Okay, IPv6, we are not using, we can leave it set like that. Okay, so that's now our 10 gig port configured with uh, dot .245. There we go, and we can show that it's not connected. So the next thing we want to do is to go off and get our switch connected up. So we're going to close that down for now. And then we're going to take our network switch now. Don't be alarmed by everything you see in here. So what we've got is we've actually got our NAS drive and set up in a media cabinet because uh, of the noise. So as you can see here, this is our um, PFSense firewall. This is our current network switch. And then over on this side, we've got our NAS drive and we've got our um, UPS system. And then in the center cupboard, we've got our second NAS drive. And then that's just a, um, 
a Virgin Media TiVo box. So we're going to be replacing this network switch with this Zizel and then getting things connected up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect both of our NAS drives. So we're going to disconnect our connection to the NAS and to our other switch. And then we want to try and, there we go. So that's our network switch disconnected. Okay, so there we go, that's our switch installed. Now we're gonna plug in our one gig connection to our PFSense device. We're then going to connect our ethernet run, which is back to our other one gig switch. And then we're going to find, okay, we're going to connect our second NAS device into port 8. And then we need to remove, so this cable here is a standard Cat5 cable. And then this cable that came with the NAS drive is our 10 gig or our Cat6 cable. which is shielded and very heavy duty by the feel of it. Okay. And then if I show you behind the box itself, so this is our USB cable going off to our UPS uh, device. This is our 10 gig port up here. And then we've got two one gig ports behind the back there. We've got two fans. So I'm gonna connect in our 10 gig cable. like that and then we're going to run that back round to our switch and then we're going to connect that into our 10 gig port here and plug that into the center one okay and that's come up as blue which means it's 10 gig there we go. So that's now showing as 10 gig and connected. So now we want to go back to our interface just to double check, uh, make sure that we can log back on to the device itself, uh, bearing in mind that we now need to switch the IP addresses around again. Okay, so here we are connected again. So let's have a look and see what the warnings are. So you can see here that um, it's moaning now about the um, adapter 2 not being connected. So let's go back in and go into our network and virtual switch. Okay, so this is saying, let's give it a refresh. There we go. So this is saying that this one is connected. Network speed is 10 gigabit second. Uh, this one here is now disconnected. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go back into the configuration of this interface. We're going to reset this back to um, DHCP and so that will take care of any um, future connectivity and again i'm going to say obtain a server um, dns server address automatically and then we can apply that configuration okay so that is now taken care of so these two interfaces are now dhcp so now what i want to do is i'm going to go back into here and i need to change this to the ip address that we had set, which is our fixed IP address. Um, we're just gonna make sure that everything else is set correctly. The gateway and DNS server are set correctly, so that's fine. So now we can apply that configuration. Say so yes. And now it's redirecting us to the correct IP address. And there we go. So this is now connected with 10 gig. Now let's go back and just check, make sure that the switch all looks okay. 
just do a quick search again for it. Should have the same IP address. And then we can log in. Right, so there we go. So this is showing us how we're connected. So you can see here, port one, it goes off to our PFSense um, firewall. Port two goes off to our network switch that we've got back here on the workbench. Uh, port eight is our uh, secondary NAS drive. So this is what we use for home, basically, which is a, a RAID 5 with four, four 12 gig, well, 12 terabyte drives in. And then we've got our um, super high powered NAS, which is currently it's got um, eight 18 terabyte um, enterprise level drives in it. And it's got two 500 gig um, M.2 drives that we use for caching drives. So that's everything connected now. So let's briefly talk about the Zeisel switch itself. So uh, it's a desktop desktop switch. Uh, it's got a single fan in, very silent. Um, we're not sure on temperatures at the moment because we've only just got it connected, but um, reports say that uh, it does get a little bit warm, but um, with the fan in there, that will keep things nice and cool. We don't envisage any problems. Um, the reason why we went for this is simply because it was the cheapest one that we could find that was available in stock. So TP-Link do, uh, do one that's got um, five 10 gig ports, which is um, doesn't have a fan in, which is silent. And they also do an eight 10 gig port switch. Um, those are more expensive than this. This one we got off Amazon, believe it or not. It was £199.99p, um, including the uh, delivery. So um, it's the cheapest one we can find that gives us 10 gig connectivity. So the uh, switching, switching throughput on the device is adequate for what we need in a small environment that we've got. Obviously, if you're in an enterprise or a, a corporate environment, you're gonna want to use um, switches that have got much um, higher switching throughput, but this is perfect for our needs. As I say, it's silent, it's 200 quid, um, a real bargain. So we'll leave a link to this unit in the description below. Go and check it out, but I just wanna say thanks for watching. If you found it useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next one.